As you may be aware, Google has drastically changed how the different keyword match types in Google operate. Now, technically, there are still three different types of match types that you can use in Google Ads, with the different ones being broad match, phrase match, and exact match. But there is one of those key match types that I just don't use anymore. Plus, there is a very little known feature that is now only available in broad match keywords. Now, very soon, I'm gonna be taking you through how I actually set up and structure my new ad groups for Google Ads search campaigns, taking into account how the different match types in Google now operate. But so that you can fully understand why I use this strategy and why it works so well, you need to firstly really understand how the different keyword match types in Google operate. And what I really wanna be taking you through is the practical operation of these different match types rather than just the way that Google explains it. And for you to fully understand this, I need to take you back to a world of pre-2021 where Google actually had four different types of match types where it had its broad match. And with broad match, the user just pretty much had to use any of the individual words that you had in your broad match keyword. And then there was exact match, where the user not only had to use the keywords that you had targeted, but it had to be in the right order. Now for the previous five years before that, Google had been tinkering with that and it was allowing through more misspellings and also what Google called close variants, where it may not be exactly what you wanted the user to use, but Google was basically putting in there that the, the user had made a bit of a mistake or if it felt that it was close enough to the exact match that Google would still trigger your ads for that search. Then there was phrase match where it was different to exact match in that it still needed to include all of the words, but it could be in a different order and there could also be some extra words in there. And then there was that fourth match type, which is no longer available, which was broad match modifiers. And this was a really, really popular method where you would add in three or four keywords. And as long as the user had those three or four keywords, your ads would be triggered. So it was a great way by adding in extra words to further refine what type of user searches would trigger your ads. And then in 2021, Google introduced two core changes, with the first one being that Google stopped targeting the actual words that were in your targeted keywords, and it targeted the meaning of those keywords. So for example, if you had an exact match keyword of hotels in Manhattan, New York, your exact match keyword could trigger ads for user search terms for anything like accommodation in Manhattan, New York, New York hotels, and even places to stay in New York, because all of those three options, Google would deem would have the same meaning as the exact keyword of hotels in Manhattan, New York. Because Google would deem that hotel would have the same meaning as accommodation, and by the user using just New York would mean the same as Manhattan, New York. So that was the first change, which I think a lot of people have got a full understanding of. But the second change, which wasn't as well documented, was that Google actually merged broad match modifiers and the phrase match type together. And what this meant is that the current phrase match is more expansive than what it was pre-2021. So a phrase match now is a lot more broader, sorry for using phrase and broad, but a phrase match now is more expansive and would be able to trigger ads for more user searches than what it would have done before 2021. But it's slightly more restrictive than the old broad match modifiers because there's still that element of meaning as opposed to just including all of the words. Now what I will do in the description below, I will link in a page which explains this out further because it can get a bit technical and I don't wanna get off track for what I really wanna share with you in this video. Because I wanted to get to those questions that I raised at the start and the first of those is that I pretty much do not use phrase match anymore. And the reason for that is because the most successful structure that I found with Google Ads search campaigns since all of these changes is to have two or three core broad match keywords. And then from there, when you're completing your search term audits, you're building out extra exact match keywords. Now let me go through the reasons for why I do this and why I don't use phrase match. But let's start with the structure of having two or three broad match keywords and then adding in extra exact match keywords. The the reason why I add in those exact match keywords is for three core reasons. Firstly is because in my ad copy, I like to use a lot of dynamic keyword insertion. And if you're unaware, dynamic keyword insertion will, as the name suggests, dynamically insert the keyword, so not the user search term, the keyword that triggered your ad. By having more keywords, I've got a much better chance of the user seeing the actual search term or a very close variant of what they used in my ad copy. The second reason is that by having a collection of exact match keywords, I'm able to see data at a keyword level. The more keywords that I have, rather than just seeing all the data grouped into two or three different broad match keywords, and there's a whole heap of different variations that could be seen there, even within that same keyword theme, by adding in a collection of different exact 
exact match keywords, even though they may not get as much traffic, when they are triggered, I'm able to see some really specific data. And this helps me with my general optimizations. And then thirdly, and this is actually a really important one, especially if you're using Search and Performance Max in the same account, is because if you have an exact match keyword listed in a search campaign, which could also technically be targeted in a Performance Max campaign, the search campaign with the exact match keyword will take the priority. So that way, if it's a keyword that I really want the user to see with my search campaign, by adding that as an exact match keyword, it's making sure that that user is seeing the ad from a search campaign, not my Performance Max campaign. And now the process that I go about and to build out that exact word keyword list. So I start with a broad match keywords and then I build out those exact match keywords is I do that in a process of what I call a search term audit. And that's where I go through and review my search terms. So not the keywords in the insights, go and review the search terms. And then when I add in my extra negative keywords, I'm also adding in extra exact match keywords to target into my ad group. And that's a really, really important process, especially on a new campaign, and especially when you're using broad match, because that allows you to refine your search traffic really, really quickly, so you're not wasting money in Google Ads. And to help you further in this, so that we can move on, I wanna give you free access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. And what this does is that this is a checklist which lists all of the individual optimization actions that you need to complete in your Google Ads search campaigns. And it takes it a step further and also lets you know how often you need to complete that optimization action. So whether it's every 72 hours, every week, every month, or every 90 days. And if you wanna get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist, just follow that link in the description below. Because right now, what I wanna take you through is I wanna take you through that really little known feature about broad match keywords. And the best way for me to explain this is if we jump into a screen share. So Let's go into that right now. Now, what we're looking at here is the different types of match types. So we've got exact and phrase match and then broad match. And what we're also looking at here is the different signals that Google assigns to each of these keywords. So obviously all three of them, so exact, phrase, and broad match function off keywords. But what broad match does is broad match also looks at these other signals. It also looks at the landing page, which the ad is going to. It looks at other keywords in the ad group. It looks at the previous searches. Now, this is a really, really important one because what what you need to remember is that more and more within Google Ads, Google is looking at the user's previous search history. And then it also looks at the user location. With the most important point here is that broad match is the only keyword match type that uses all of these available signals. And the reason why it does this is it's to better understand the intent of both the query and your keyword and how they work together. And that's why I use that strategy of having broad match and then building out extra exact match keywords in my ad groups because those two or three broad match keywords pull in those extra signals. Then by carrying out my regular search term audits and especially for a new campaign, I'm doing this three times a week. It allows me to very quickly add in extra negative keywords so that we can limit the amount of untargeted spending that's just not converting. So by using that structure, it's that perfect balance of leveraging off Google signals because Google does have a lot more data than what we're seeing. But then me as the Google manager, able to put in those different stops and caps to shut down any testing or keyword themes that we know are just not gonna be profitable. And for me, that's always been the best position where we've seen the most success with Google Ads, where we're allowing Google to run some tests to a certain degree, but where they're stopping off different tests that we know are not going to be profitable. Once again, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. And remember to follow that link in the description below so that you can get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. And now that you have a greater understanding of how the different match types in Google Ads work in 2024, I want you to go through and watch this video here so that you can go through and complete your keyword searches to find the best keywords for your business in an easy step-by-step -step process. Go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thanks for joining me. See ya.